From a three-roomed log cabin to summer houses, greenhouses and sheds, we specialise in garden buildings at the Burford Garden Company, Burford, the garden centre for all seasons. Dispatches from the front. I knew what it was before I, I opened it. Written with hope. Can you imagine putting a pen to paper knowing it's going to be the last time? Written with love. You have always been the pride and joy of my life. Last Letters Home, a Tuesday night legacy, 1040 on Central. Now on Central, live for peace, a royal gala. Go, 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 go! <laughs> Good evening and welcome to St Martin's Lane uh, where officially now for the next two and a half hours this is ITVE. There's a party going on here but there's an even bigger party in there. You may have seen TV galas before but you'll never have seen a TV gala like this one. Waiting backstage to help you celebrate Rowan Atkinson, Michael Caine, Engelbert Humperdinck, Jan Lumley, Sir David Frost, Sir Harry Seacom, Sir John Mills, Russ Abbott, Piers Brosnan, Michael Barrymore. But of course every great gala needs a great guest and we've got the best guest you could ever wish for. Prince Charles on his way to the theatre right now. Thank you, Chris. Yes, the Prince's car is uh, now approaching the theatre. It's coming through Admiral Admiralty Arch into Trafalgar Square. This night, 50 years ago, the square here was the scene of enormous celebration of the ending of the war in Europe with thousands of people singing, cheering and dancing. The Prince's car rounds the square. It's going in the wrong direction, of course. The traffic usually goes the other way. It passes St. Martin in the Fields Church and the National Gallery and moves up St. Martin's Lane towards the London Coliseum. The Prince's Motor Club arriving for tonight's Royal Gun, live for peace. Stepping from the car, first is uh, ex King Constantine of Greece, accompanied by the Queen of Greece, but here is the Prince of Wales. is going over for a chat with those involved in our street party here in St. Martin's Lane. First of all, he's being met by Major David Marshall, the conductor of the band of the Coldstream Guards, who are playing for the street party. For these children, of course, the Second World War is all distant history, but they seem to know all about it nonetheless. And they're obviously excited at a splendid opportunity to meet the Prince of Wales on this glamorous night for St. Martin's Lane and the London Coliseum. And it's lovely weather here in London tonight, much the same as 50 years ago. Then, on the afternoon of VE Day in London, the temperature topped 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This evening's gala, by the way, is in aid of the Prince's Trust. The Trust was founded by the Prince of Wales in 1976, its chief aim being to help disadvantaged young people between the ages of 14 and 25 years old. They may be homeless, unemployed, abused, disabled, ex-offenders, or just had life tougher than most. Get also present here this evening, as we saw emerging from the car, ex king and queen of Greece, Constantine and Anne Marie. Watching the events as they go on outside, the prince now moving back towards the London Coliseum for tonight's Royal Garden. Guard of Honor. And now the Prince meets the manager of the London Coliseum, Toby Beasley. is welcomed by John Jarvis, who's the chairman of the Prince's Trust. And a hundred young people are here to meet the Prince as well, and they've all benefited from the Prince's Trust, or will do so in the future. All these young people probably feel themselves to be a long way away from the Second World War and VE Day, but this gala of celebration and commemoration of deeds carried out half a century and more ago will be of direct benefit to them and many others of the rising generation. now firmly ensconced in the theatre but as he goes to sit down at the Royal Box I'm going to chat to some of the people here, some of the young people. What's your name? Jamie. Where are you from Jamie? Teddington. Teddington, nice to see you. What do you know about VE Day? What does it mean? Basically it's the uh, celebration of victory in Europe. Do you think it's important? Very important because uh, otherwise we wouldn't be free today. Lots of people lost their lives. Exactly. Uh, who told you about all this? My history teacher. Your history teacher, what's his yeah. name? Mr Cox. Let's say hello to Mr Cox. Hello Mr Cox, how are you doing? <laughs> Okay. Oi! Hello! Talk to me. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? Giovanni. Nice to meet you, Giovanni. Where are you from? Um, Trinidad. Okay. Right. How are you celebrating today? Um, we're fla um, waving the Union Jack and yeah. blowing hooters. Blowing your hooters. What does it mean, VE Day? What does it mean to you? It means victory in Europe. Who told you about that? Um, my teacher at school. And what's your name? Rachel. Okay, Rachel. Tell me, who was the most famous entertainer in the war years? Um, Dame Vera Lynn. Dame Vera Lynn. Do you know any of her songs? Do you know any of the songs? Yeah, we'll meet again. Do you want to sing it with me? Yeah, okay. Sing it on your own. Go on, Giovanni. We'll meet again. Don't know where. Don't know where. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Now, as Giovanni carries on, I'll just say goodbye. We're going in the theatre for the greatest gala you've ever seen.
God bless you all. Majesties, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, before I just make a, a, my own brief uh, contribution to the proceedings this evening, I did just want to thank everybody for agreeing to perform here at the uh, London Coliseum. It is enormously generous of all the stars who've come from all over the world and uh, from various corners uh, of the earth to be here this evening, and I am enormously grateful to them. Apart from anything else, they're going to help my Prince's Trust to do a great deal more for all sorts of young people throughout the country, which, as you can imagine, is uh, of great importance. But I also hope that this evening, above all else, is going to enable us to remember all those heroic efforts and sacrifices made by an earlier generation certainly my parents' generation and my grandparents' generation, uh, many of them at the time, when you think about it, uh, scarcely older than most of the people uh, that my trust is helping today. Now, I, um, I wanted to read a very short poem on this occasion, which I find particularly moving, and uh, I hope you'll feel is appropriate for the occasion. And I think it's particularly appropriate because it was a poem chosen uh, and quoted by Sir Winston Churchill uh, when the United States of America entered the war. And it was written in the last century by somebody called Arthur Hugh Clough. And I wanted to quote it because, more than anything else, it does remind me of um, Sir Winston Churchill, who I remember, believe it or not, when I was a very small child, uh, coming to see my uh, mother uh, when, I was, um, when I was very small and uh, I have very vivid memories of him. And I think it's particularly appropriate to uh, recall with pride and gratitude the role that Sir Winston Churchill played in this country throughout those very dark years when without his quite extraordinary powers of leadership uh, and inspiration I really don't believe, uh, even though I was born three years after the war, that uh, the country would have survived and uh, thrown off the possibility of total domination by another country. Now, I hope, well, I think this poem may sound familiar to the somewhat older members of the audience, because uh, in those days, during the war, it was pinned up as a poster in primary schools throughout the country. It goes as follows. Say not the struggle naught availeth, the labor and the wounds are vain. The enemy faints not nor faileth, and as things have been, things remain. If hope were dupes, fears may be liars. It may be in yon smoke concealed, your comrades chase e'en now the flyers, and but for you possess the field. For while the tired waves 
vainly breaking, seem here no painful inch to gain. Far back, through creeks and inlets reeking, comes silent, flooding in the main. And not by eastern windows only, when daylight comes, comes in the light. In front, the sun climbs slow, how slowly, but westward, look, the land is bright. Gentlemen, will you please welcome Sir David Frost. Your Royal Highness, thank you very, very much indeed. That's the first time that a show like this has ever begun with the top of the bill. In the last year of the war, Hitler went to an astrologer and was told that Germany would be defeated on a British bank holiday. And Hitler said, which day is that? And the astrologer said, Herr Hitler, any day you're defeated will be a British bank holiday. <laughs> and so it is, and so it is. This weekend, all the talk has been about tin hats, sandbags and bunkers. And that's just at Conservative Central Office. <laughs> and now, here at the Coliseum, I'd like to ask you to welcome my co-host for the evening. The woman who produced that famous television documentary profile of Prince Charles called A Prince Among Islands, which can still be seen on Sky. The island, not the TV station. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the face that launched a thousand clips, Miss Selena Scott. Thank you very much indeed, David, Your Royal Highness. Fifty years ago tonight, London was in a state of glorious ecstasy. To quote the Daily Mail, rattles rattled, whistles whistled, people yelled, rockets exploded and fireworks banged. Oh, what a beautiful sight. Piccadilly was just one big, happy family. And it's in that spirit of celebration now that we start live for peace with some jive for peace. So prepare your heart for stopping, your mind for blowing, and your toes for tapping as we welcome the Royal Gala dancers with their jitterbug tap. <laughs> One. 
Jitterbug Tap, brilliantly choreographed by Alan Harding, who, by the way, has staged and choreographed tonight's show for us all. Now, a few years ago, our next performer was one of Canada's best-kept secrets. Today, her name is on everybody's lips. She's dominated the charts for the past year with hits like The Power of Love. And the one she's singing for us tonight, Think Twice, Please welcome Celine Dion. Don't think I can't feel I miss something wrong. You've been the sweetest part of my life for so long. And you and I know there'll be a storm tonight. This is getting serious. Now you think about it. Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? 
Who do you know that wouldn't like Kellogg's Corn Flakes? Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know that wouldn't like Kellogg's Corn Flakes? Have your breakfast in the better way. These Kellogg's Corn Flakes make your day. Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? On millions of breakfast tables every morning in Britain, housewives are serving breakfast the better way. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, 50 years of sunshine. When people started traveling more often, we introduced what was right for the times. When people wanted to carry less cash, we also offered what was right for the times. And today, when the world doesn't always revolve on your terms, American Express introduces a credit card that gives you the credit you deserve. The new American Express credit card rewards you with an interest rate you'll appreciate and no fee for the first year. To apply, call now on 0800 700 717. It's the right card for the times. He's a victim of discrimination because of his age. She lives in the wrong area. He's discriminated against because he's got children. Many people find it difficult getting competitive car insurance. At Swinton, we have the widest range of policies, so whoever you are, we'll find the right one for you. For a competitive quote, contact your local branch. Yo, Granny, I'm C.C. Chopper, the lollipop rapper, and I'm here to tell you about... Mmm, Chopper Chops, the great tasting world's number one lollipop. Go sweet crazy about the ice cream. Fruit and super sour flavors, it's Chopper Chops for crucial chops. Chopper Chops, sweet bread. I'll come back, Natalie. Uh, I won't forget. I'll get you some. I promise. Hi. Everything okay? Dad? Here, try this. Roaring forties. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. Certainly. How many... Out there? Well, I did promise. <laughs> You're flying long haul business class. You have a choice of two airlines. Do you choose one that gives you a business class seat, or one that gives you a first class seat, an onboard lounge, and even a bar? Tricky one, isn't it? Visit the West Midlands Safari Park for only $3.99 with the chance to win a free safari to Africa. We're on the A456 between Kidderminster and Bewdley. You'll find famous label fashions for less at Ross Labels. Fashions for all the family at low, low prices at Ross Labels on the A40 by Ross on Y. Welcome back. Of course, we must remember that even everyday life was different back in 1945. That was the time when a Big Mac was something fat people wore in the rain. <laughs> when a bung was something you found in a barrel and not in a football manager's back pocket. And three in a bed was simply a matter of how you arranged your runner beans. That was the time when the Thatcher Foundation was something she put on her face before a date with Dennis. <laughs> and, and a church outing involved the entire congregation and not just the vicar. <laughs> of course, that was a time when getting to Paris in three hours on a train was just a distant dream. Well, some things never change. <laughs> but one thing that has changed in the past 50 years is the nature of Europe. How appropriate then that we welcome now to sing the anthem of the new Europe, Ode to Joy from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. 
the distinguished British baritone, Robert Bennington. Dein Heiligtum, deine Sauber binden wieder, was die Mode streng geteilt. Alle Menschen werden Bruder, wo sein sanfter Flugel beilt. Berlin, Hamburg, Schumacher, <lacht> Baden, Baden, Lederhosen, schnell, schnell, schnell. Ja, ja, nein, nein, Apfelstrudel, Hofmeister und Holstenpilz. <lacht> Achtung, lieb Frau Milch in Porsche, um paar Vorsprung durch Technik. Donner und Blitzen, britischer Architekt. Tomorrow belongs to me. Schwein und Dummkopf, ein Bär bitte. Jürgen Klinsmann ist kaputt. Boris Becker, Himmel, boom, boom. Ich bin ein Berliner. Hole in Kindergarten. Glühwein, wo ist sein Skipass? Edelweiß singt Captain von Trapp. A danke schön, auf Wiedersehen, Pet. The excruciatingly <clears throat> brilliant. Rowan Atkinson, thank you very much indeed. Now we're all familiar with the song of Norway, aren't we? But now it's my pleasure to introduce possibly the greatest singer that Norway has produced. In her own country, she's become something of an icon and she's now poised on the brink of international stardom. Will you please welcome Sissel?
Thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be here with you tonight, but I haven't come the way from Norway all alone. I brought with me some friends. Lee Scarpoli.
will you please welcome Michael Kane. Rudyard Kipling lost his only son in the 1914-18 war and never lost sight of the great contribution made to the country's security by the ordinary common or garden soldier affectionately nicknamed Tommy Atkins. I went into a public house to get a pint of beer. The publican he up and says, we serve no red coats here. The girls behind the bar, they laughed and giggled, fit to die. I out into the street again, and to myself, says I, it's Tommy this and Tommy that, and Tommy go away. But it's thank you, Mr. Atkins, when the band begins to play. The band begins to play, my boys, the band begins to play. Oh, it's thank you, Mr. Atkins, when the band begins to play. Yes, making mock of uniforms that guard you while you sleep is cheaper than those uniforms, and they're starvation cheap. And hustling drunken soldiers when they're going large a bit is five times better business than parading in full kit. Then it's Tommy this and Tommy that, and tell me how's your soul, but it's thin red line of heroes when the drums begin to roll. The drums begin to roll, my boys. The drums begin to roll. Oh, it's thin red line of heroes when the drums begin to roll. You talk of better food for us and schools and fires and all. We'll wait for extra rations if you treat us rational. Don't mess about the cloakroom slops but prove it to our face. The widow's uniform is not the soldier man's disgrace, for it's Tommy this and Tommy that, and chuck him out the brute. But it's saviour of his country when the guns begin to shoot, and it's Tommy this and Tommy that, and anything you please. And Tommy ain't a blooming fool. You bet that Tommy sees. Michael Caine and, of course, Rajad Kipling. Now, tonight we are honoured, and so will you welcome, we're honoured to have with us tonight the men of the Camouflage Regiment. <laughs> it is remarkable what they can do, isn't it? Will we ever see their like again? And now will you welcome, please, one of the most lustrous stars of the entire Royal Ballet. <laughs> uh, you've got a beautiful entrechat there, but you're Jimmy, you're not Darcy Bussell. Oh, I see you, David. Oh, see you. Let me tell you, this is a live show. It's live TV. Oh, it is. Oh, I love it. You see, well, I'm in the pub over the road with the lads. You see, watching the show. Aye, and I was just, um, I sneaked out because it was my round. <laughs> yeah. And listen, listen, they bet me a fiver, right, that I wouldn't have come across here, right, and talk on your autocue. What will you pay me for it? A fiver. A fiver. If it's for the trust, all right, it's yours. It's for the trust. Right. Well, let me tell you, I was here this afternoon, I was watching the rehearsals, this beautiful theatre of the Coliseum. I was sitting up the stall, as I halfway up the stall, sitting next to this lout, you know, this thug, legs over the seat in front of him, couldn't have cared less. All the way through the rehearsals, he was going, Aah. I said, you be quiet, son, they're trying to work on that stage. He went, Aah. I said, I'd shut him out, there's a show going up there. Aah. I said, where are you from? He said, the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you are. Do your link then, this boy. Well done. Uh, see you, Jimmy. Talk about the news. Jimmy, here's something about the news. Jimmy, be so hard. Well, good evening. Welcome. Talk about the news. Selena Scott. News at ten. Hi. Thank you very much. All right, sir. Jimmy, Thank he'll you. be back a bit later. Right. He'll be back in a rather different guise later. Now, will you please welcome, performing the part de deux from Manon, the lady they call the new Margot Fontaine, Darcy Bustle, and Jonathan Cope.
Ladies and gentlemen, here's Chris Evans. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, Your Royal Highness. Uh, I'd just like to say I'd like people of the older generations to know that uh, people of my generation, and much younger than me, in fact, as we saw outside earlier, are very aware of how important today is. But I still don't think I'm quite worthy of standing on this stage and introducing the next act. So I'd like to bring on somebody who I think is. Somebody who was there when this all happened, somebody who was there when there was victory in Europe. Somebody who took part in the whole thing, what today's all about. Please welcome my mum. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to, you to welcome back 
Mr. Ross Abbott. Yes, indeed. Well, thank you. It's so good to be here. And tonight I'm in a big swinging mood. So all you people in the front row, make, get ready to duck. Because I've got an awful lot to swing. <laughs> Can you dig it? Let me hear you say ha! Ha! Give me another ha! Ha! Put them together, what have you got? Ha! And they said I couldn't make you laugh. <laughs> now, were these two Irishmen? Fat man, fat man, no Irish jokes. No Irish jokes. Now, were these two Scotsmen? Hey, what's the morning there, fat man? You can't do any Scottish jokes now. No Scottish jokes. No Scottish jokes. There were these two fairies. <laughs> Well, what do you know? Isn't this a great band? The finest musicians whiskey can buy. We're so glad to see so many of you wonderful people here tonight for such a worthy course. And remember, people, whatever you do in life to live, thrive, and survive, there's always that one certain something that makes us all the same. You, me, them, everybody. Everybody! Everybody needs somebody. Somebody to love, someone to love, sweetheart to miss, sugar to kiss. Well, I need you, 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 I need you, 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 I need you, you, in the morning. Well, I saw the fire. Sometimes I feel, I feel a little sad and sad. Someone. Hold that woman, hold that man. Kiss him, squeeze him, give him all your love. Signify your feelings with every gentle caress. Don't you know it's important to have somebody in the hall? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Everybody needs somebody. Everybody needs somebody to love. Someone to love. Sweet I'm to miss Sugar to kiss Well I need you I need you Joanna Lovely, River Dance, and Michael Barrymore, live for Peace. worked out beautifully. Thank you. 
much. Much. I think it'll be an adventure. It's very quick. I'm a very poor sailor. It's wonderful. Speed is the big difference. On the shuttle, it's just a lot more fun. Normally, loading's only about five, ten minutes. It's, it's all good. I needed quite a bit of persuasion, but I'm not sorry now. Je suis très, très confortable et on sent pleine sécurité. My business is in northern France, so I can be there and back in a day. 35 minutes here, totally smooth. It was fabulous. It was good value for money and very quick, so I've been encouraged to use it in the future. When you get off the shuttle, there is no passport control, so you can just drive straight off into France. We wouldn't travel any other way now. From the shuttle brochure, call 0990 700 800. Oh, direct line? Direct line insurance. People come to us for the price, but they stay for the service. Call 0121 236 2468 for motor or 0121 236 8877 for home. There are no medals for being the shoulder to cry on. No awards for passing on traditions. But to the men who give their best every day, we offer our best. Gillette Sensor XL, spring-mounted blades and microfins for the closest, most comfortable shave. And Gillette Series Shaving Gel for incredible smoothness. Sensor XL, it's our best shave. And that's something every man deserves. Gillette, the best a man can get. If you're choosy about your cheese, and picky about your pickle, and your bread's got to be 100% white, it's got to be 100% Hovis. Yes, it's Hovis. Yes, it's white. And yes, unfortunately, so is his shirt. you're six foot, as I am, next time you fly in business class, try this simple test. If your toes touch the seat in front, you're on the wrong plane. The Sailor's Hornpipe, performed by the children 
of the Royal Ballet School. And now... Barry Cryer and William Rushton call themselves the two old tarts. <laughs> as Will Carling might have put it. <laughs> but unfortunately didn't. Anyway, here they are, ladies and gentlemen, in the flesh, Barry Cryer and William Rushton. Good evening. Good evening. We're just filling in before the silence. This is the story of my life. <laughs> Only two minutes is slightly longer than we normally get. Nostalgia is the keynote. Grand old songs from the Second World War. But they were censored in those days, ladies and gentlemen, to avoid inflaming or disturbing the civilian population. We didn't have microphones in those days. You know, they were, they were melted down and put into railings. Indeed they were. Indeed they were. <laughs> Here are those grand old songs. No, they're not. Although there's we, worrying we words. We haven't got time to do we all that. Time no, no, they're not. Haven't we, oh dear? No, no, no. One gets older. I know. Words. You used to be rationed in those days. We used to have word wardens going around saying, cut that adjective. So Winston Churchill used most of them, of course. It's a <laughs> bloody sound investment when you look back on it. Yes. Tommy Handley now. I know Tommy Handley now, of course, uh, chairman of the Tory party. Well, as, yes, we, as we speak. As we speak, <laughs> yes. Glenn Miller, the cheeky chappy. Oh, here's David. Gentlemen, I, haven't years been I'm sorry to you? interrupt you at this point, but as you know, it's 8.37 right now. Yes, sir. So we have to move to that particular <laughs> moment. <laughs> so I know when may I'm we not. apologise? Not at all. Not at all. And may we thank you very much? Thank you, David. From the bottom of our thank hearts. You. Thank you. Now we join the Queen and... Here at the Coliseum, Prince Charles, in observing the two-minute silence in honour of those sons and daughters of this land who never experienced the end of World War II. So can we all please rise together and honour all those who died in war that we could live in peace.
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pierce Brosnan. The London, the London Adventist Choral with Abide With Me. As an Irishman myself, I'm particularly proud of something extraordinary that happened at the Point Theatre in Dublin last year during the interval of RTE's Eurovision Song Contest. Nobody now remembers the winning Eurovision Song, but no one who's seen it will ever forget that exhilarating interval performance. Such was its success that it's now been developed into a full stage show, composed by Bill Whelan, featuring 24 Irish dancers, Gene Butler, Michael Flatley, and Anuna. Please welcome Riverdance.
Robert Humperdinck, Anthony Dell and Margaret Porter, Joanna Lumley and Sir Harry Seekin in a Royal Gala, Live for Peace. It looked like a party, but it was more a giant sigh of relief. There were smiles, but if you looked closely, the eyes were often sad. Fifty years later, we remember the celebrations and honor those who didn't make them, but made them possible. We still behave badly to one another, but there hasn't been a third world war. And in Northern Ireland, the Middle East and South Africa, people who were once fighting are now talking. And while there is talk, there is hope. It's a lovely day tomorrow. Tomorrow is a lovely day. Next. Have a seat. Just talk and you can go. A few words and the others can go too. Just tell me your name. If you don't, we'll have to fill you in for the last time. What's your name? Uh, Keith! Polo strong. We like them strong and silent. If you want beautiful hair, there's organics. The only shampoo with glucosyl. A natural nutrient which nourishes your hair's living roots. The results are a revelation. Your hair shines with health and beauty. Organics from the Elida Hair Institute. Healthy looking from the root, beautiful to the tip. So, you having a good holiday? Oh, yeah, brilliant. Went to this amazing place called Futuroscope. Here, have a look. Where is it? Mars? No, Poitiers. It's the park of the moving image. Look, you can see films that jump out at you. <laughs> and ones that make you jump out of your skin. Hey, this boat looks almost real. That's p &O, the people we came across with. Sail to France with p &O European ferries and visit Futuroscope. For the area's larger selection of quality pine furniture at amazing prices, visit The Pine Shop. Three draw bedside unit, only £59. Single pedestal dressing table, only £99. Large five draw chest, only £109. And a double wardrobe, only £199. The Pine Shop. There's a store near you. Call 01993 705 for a free catalogue. And now, for the first time ever, The Pine Shop are offering interest-free credit on all orders over £600. Hurry, limited offer. At the Jewel and the Crown, we cook food the traditional Indian way. Sample the real flavors of India with Mr. Ali and his staff at the Jewel in the Crown. Tonight, of course, is a night for nostalgia. Those of us who are old enough will never forget that day 50 years ago when Allied Carpets announced their first sale. <laughs> which is still on, but it must end on Saturday. <laughs> and indeed, that historic ad for Meyer's Comfortable Beds, which read, quote, Meyer's Comfortable Beds, the bed you can be proud of every time you make it. <laughs> they did awfully well. Back in 1945, two words which probably weren't on everybody's lips were absolutely and fabulous. <laughs> and certainly not together. But now they simply mean Miss Joanna Lumley. <laughs> Beloved, now, 
you're not really here as an actress tonight. You're here as an author That's right. and researcher. That's right, because about two years ago, the Imperial War Museum invited me to write a book to accompany one of their major exhibitions, which was called Forces Sweethearts, and it was about wartime love and romance from the First World War right up to the Gulf War. Now, we put out advertisements on the television, on the radio, newspapers, and said, can you share your memories with us? And the response was overwhelming. Thousands of people sent in photographs, letters, memorabilia, and things that they'd written at the time to remember those extraordinary days. One particularly reminded me of the happiness of the end of the war. It was written by Anne, a young woman in the ATS. She and her soldier sweetheart, Jim Roscoe, a desert rat from Tobruk, mingled with the excited crowds in London on VE Day, the 8th of May, 1945. They're still happily married today, but this is what Anne wrote when she was 21. Everyone had been given staggered leave to celebrate victory in Europe. Jim found his way to my camp, and we decided that London was the place to be, right in the center of the celebrations. We went to Piccadilly Circus and Buckingham Palace. I was giddy and heady with the most wonderful feeling. It was fireworks, thunder and lightning, electricity all at the same time. For the soldier linking my arm, this was the culmination of years abroad. Victory and a new life. The crowds danced and sang right through to Buckingham Palace. Thousands and thousands of merry people, arm in arm. The atmosphere was electric. Everyone was so happy, all going along together, goodness knows where, we just went. I'll never forget that day, the wonderful feeling of exhilaration, youth, relief, longing, feelings of utter joy that life could begin in earnest. I was in love with living and that soldier linking my arm.
I was dancing in the dark with Anthony Dahl and Marguerite Porter, choreographed by Gillian Ling. Now, our next guest became a star quite literally overnight, 27 years ago, when he appeared on Sunday night at the London Palladium, singing a little number called Release Me. Since then, he's sold a phenomenal 130 million records. He's earned 64 gold discs, 23 platinum, and has the rare distinction of being the only international star whose name is worth 179 points at Scrabble. <laughs> I think you've got it. Please welcome Engelbert Humperdinck. happy to be home for this very special occasion and this very special day and now with your kind permission I'd like to do a song for my uh, latest release here it is thanks John <laughs> An open door And my secret love's no secret anymore Once I had a secret love That lived To be free So I told A friendly star The way That dreamers Are finding Just How wonderful You are I'm 
so in love with you. Now I shout it from the highest hill, even to the good and bad. At last, my heart's an open door And my secret knows No secret anymore And my secret loves No secret anymore Sir John Mills, Bobby Davro, Vanessa May, and Michael Barrymore, live for peace. But all doesn't look too happy, does she? And you know why that is? It's her birthday, and the doormat's a bit light on birthday cards. Actually, what really happened was this. There were plenty of cards. Do you know why? It's me. Mum, don't forget Gran's birthday. Helen, before you go on holiday, send Gran a card, all right? I know you're broke, Tom, so I've got you a card. You can sign it when you come over, all right? I'd like to order some flowers, please. Don't ask me why women bring round more than men. Maybe they care more. I know one thing, though. When they care on the blower, things happen. Oh, the flowers are beautiful. And I had a lovely lot of cards. It's good to talk. <laughs> Behave yourself. In those days, I never really thought about why I ate shredded wheat, but lately I've discovered something that's really made me think. Shredded wheat has no added salt and no added sugar. That's because it's only made with 100% whole wheat. If you ask me how many other cereals could say that, I'd have to think. Nestle Shredded Wheat and Bite Size 2. You won't find a better cereal. Today is victory in Europe day. It's Chaz and Dave's VE Day Street Party. 50 victorious songs. It's the greatest party ever. The Citroen Zandia has one of the most advanced suspension and handling systems in the world. A system that compensates for every bump and bend the road can throw at you. So when they say there's no rock and roll, they mean it. When people started travelling more often, we introduced what was right for the times. When people wanted to carry less cash, we also offered what was right for the times. And today, when the world doesn't always revolve on your terms, American Express introduces a credit card that gives you the credit you deserve. The new American Express credit card rewards you with an interest rate you'll appreciate and no fee for the first year. To apply, call now on 0800 700 717. It's the right card for the times. Well, I reckon it's that dodgy inlet valve again, Dad. That one. I thought you two could do with a break. Ah, oh, tea for the workers, eh, Dad? Hold on a minute. Those aren't proper mini rolls. He won't like them. He's such an old fuss pot. At Safeway, we're so confident about the quality of all our own brand products that if you don't prefer them, we'll give you your money back and a replacement. Oh, no, he likes them. Oh, they're very good. Well, that's a bit of a shame, actually. I'd already worked out what to spend a refund on. Refund and replace at Safeway. Welcome back. Historians say that Hitler apparently knew it was the end when the Russians opened a barrage on the Brandenburg Gate and the Americans opened a McDonald's on the Koenigstrasse. <laughs> and Churchill said we would fight them on the beaches. Now, of course, 
we're fighting them on the sunbeds as well. <laughs> and now we come to an introduction that is a great pleasure for me to give, because in 1945, a young actor in a wartime film created a great stir when he recited a poem consisting of just 12 brief lines. 12. The film was This Way to the Stars. The poem was Johnny Head in Air by John Putney. The young actor was John Mills. Here is that same young actor, 50 years on, to recite that poem again. Do not despair for Johnny Head in Air. He sleeps as sound as Johnny Underground. Fetch out no shroud for Johnny in the cloud, but keep your tears for him in after years. Better by far for Johnny the bright star to keep your head and see his children fed. Sir John said that in addition to his own career in the army, that in fact he worked out in movies, he also spent six and a half years in the war in the Navy as well. So he's got a, a double record. And now, at this point in the proceedings, we're going to explain what's been going on here. In fact, David, as everyone knows, we've been listening to Chaz and Dave during the commercial break, and we thought it was time you at home had a chance to sing along as well. That's right, so right now will you settle back for some rock and roll, some fun and games from, there they are up there looking absolutely magnificent. Thank Here's you. the apostrophe, <laughs> Chaz and Dave. Now come on, sing up, you know Dave. Here we go, one, two, three. We're gonna rang out the washing on the sacred line. Have you any dirty washing, mama dear? We're gonna rang out the washing on the sacred line. Cause the washing day is here. A weapon, the weapon may be wet or fine. We'll just run along without a care. We're gonna rang out the washing on the sacred line. And the sacred line's still there. Kiss me goodnight, Sergeant Major. Come on, tuck me in your little wooden bed. Sergeant Major, when we hear your bowling shall I Don't forget to wake me in the morning and bring me round a nice hot cup of tea. Kiss me goodnight, Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major, be a mother to me. Underneath the lamplight by the barricade, darling, I remember the way we used to wait. There that you whispered tenderly. That you love me, you'll always be my lily of the lamb light, my only lily. Say hello to the folks that I know Tell them I want 
and gentlemen, will you please welcome the Pen Dragons. Good evening, I'm Jonathan Pendragon, and we have one more illusion for you that's very, very fast. So we'll give you this. Keep your eyes on us. Don't look away. Don't even blink. Because if you do, you will miss it.
Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Davro. Thank you very much. Good evening. And welcome here. Or as young Joe Pasquale would say, la 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 la. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to professional show business. Ha ha. Here's a trick that Paul Daniels can't do. <laughs> right. <laughs> down the front can't do it either. It's nice to be in. I won't be on long because I left the dog with the next door neighbours and they're Cantonese. And uh, <laughs> I said to Michael Kane in the wings, I said, I've only got five minutes, Michael, what should I do? He said, look, listen, borrow my glasses, he said, go out there, do some impressions with the glasses. So that's what I'm going to do. Is he laughing? Right. I'm going to do impressions with glasses. Frank Carson. In the air, That's a cracker. <laughs> and you know an Irish fella's been using the word processor. There's Tipex on the TV screen. <laughs> Ronnie Corbett. It's lovely to be here, wouldn't it be? <laughs> I, said to, uh, I said to my wife, I said, <laughs> you know, I said, darling, let's make love the way we used to. <laughs> she said, over my dead body. I said, nothing's changed. <laughs> Marjorie, listen, listen, turn it in, will you? Turn it in. Turn it in. Wallop. <laughs> I'm in a pub the other day, ladies and I'm in a pub. All of a sudden, a brain walks in. Hey, brain. I'll repeat that. Hey, brain. He walks up to the bar. He said, I want a pint of bitter. The barman said, I'm not serving you. And the brain said, why? And the barman said, you're out of your head, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's me, Leo McCuskill here. Just time for a quick gale warning. Gail, get out of my flat. The wife's coming home. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's me, John Cold here, parliamentary comedian. I say, I say, I say. What's John Major's underpants and Leicester Football Club got in common? They're both sat at the bottom of the premiere. <laughs> oh, Hello, it's very funny, isn't it? Hello, everybody. It's me, your premier here. Oh, please don't stand up. Yes. It's lovely to be here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, at the Coliseum, to look out there at a capacity audience. I tried to get tickets to Norma myself. I said to the manager, any tickets? He said, there's no seats left. I said, I know the feeling. <laughs> Somebody said to me, John, how do you get a small business? I said, buy a large one and wait. <laughs> Thank you. In America, they have Johnny Cash, Bob Hope, Stevie Wonder. In this country, what have we got? No cash, no hope, it's no wonder. <laughs> Remember the words of that famous man. We'll fight them on the beaches. We'll fight them on the shores. We'll fight them in the air. Of course, Eric Cantona. <laughs> but the when the going gets tough, it won't bother me. When my back's up against the fence, it won't bother me. Not unless I get paint on my anorak. When the Germans decide to take over the whole world by throwing a huge towel over it, it won't bother me. If the Argentinians try to get their revenge by taking all the keys off the tins of corned beef, it still won't bother me. None of these things will bother me. Why? I'll tell you why. Because Tony Blair would be Prime Minister then. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. How are we doing for John? Right. Oh, sorry, I haven't got enough time. We've got to do a, long, a song to end with, ladies and gentlemen. This is a song very close to my heart. It's called Kidneys. Here we go. It's... Uh... <laughs> Reminds me, have you been watching Coronation Street? Hey, Deirdre, I give you my kidneys, Deirdre. I love you, Deirdre. <laughs> this song then for Deirdre. I used... To... <laughs> Have you seen him? If he's an actor, I'll drop my trousers in B-Jams. Hello. <laughs> I do this song for Deirdre. I used to go out with a girl called Lorraine, but I no longer go out with Lorraine. I no go out with Deirdre. This song is called, I can see Deirdre now, Lorraine has gone. <laughs> we do a few singing impressions. Start with Cliff. Just you know I Why, why you and I who well, by and by Not true, not true love ways Frank Sinatra Sometimes we'll cry Ring a thing Sometimes we will sigh Cleo Lane I don't know what Just do and I Stop it up and do that Shirley Bassey Throughout day Thank you A true A true love Johnny Mathis Will bring us choice to share With those who really care Oh yeah Sometimes Sometimes we'll cry Still a black And 
This is a quote from the Daily Express in June 1943, quote, Women's clothing will be held up until the needs of all seagoing personnel have been met. <laughs> That's your thought for the week. When she was 11, the young woman that you're about to meet was described by the director of the Royal College of Music as a true child prodigy like Mozart and Mendelssohn. No longer a child, she's now a grand old lady of 16. Will you welcome the phenomenal Vanessa May? Live at the London Coliseum as a Harry Seacombe, the Mass Choirs and Michael Barrymore in a Royal Gala, live for peace.
for high quality fuel and the finest service from people with a passion for what they do. Jet. It's a people thing. Felix! Stop that! Okay, I give up. Cats like Felix. Like Felix. Heartburn. Get Bisodol Heartburn. Fast-acting relief plus a special ingredient for lasting protection. It acts fast and lasts. So with our flexible payment mortgage, you'd save over £16,000. And that's simply by increasing your repayments by 1.5% each year. £16,000? You are joking. Even on a £45,000 mortgage? That's with monthly repayments. Of course, you could decide to pay weekly instead. Weekly? So what if we did that then? Well, you could pay the mortgage off nine years and three months earlier, and you'd save over £25,000. <laughs> Can we have that in writing then? To find out how you could save thousands of pounds interest on your mortgage and pay it off years earlier, pop into your nearest branch or phone free on 0800 20 30 90. Yorkshire Bank, tailoring mortgages to your needs. On May the 8th, 1945, Trafalgar Square witnessed something quite extraordinary. The outbreak of peace. To celebrate the end of the Second World War, the Royal Mint introduces this commemorative two-pound coin. Dove contains neutral cleansing ingredients and one-quarter moisturizing cream. in your ice cream. Ranieri. Nothing looks like it. Tastes like it. Feels like it. Its smooth creaminess embraces a rich velvety center, making it utterly absorbing. Ranieri. So intensely ice cream. Ladies and gentlemen, our next performer was born in Bermondsey in the 1950s. Think of that, from Bermondsey to the Colosseum in just 40 short years. And you can't blame all of it on London <laughs> transport. Um, <laughs> here he is to explain what took him so long. Will you welcome Michael Barrymore? indeed. Thank you. Welcome. That entrance was longer than the war. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you, everybody. Now, uh, may I just explain a few things? Uh, good evening, everybody out there in radio and TV land. Welcome to the show. Now, tonight at this particular spot uh, was supposed to be Vera Lynn. <laughs> at this particular juncture. Uh, and I'm here uh, taking place for Vera tonight. Now, the reason that Vera is not here this evening is quite honest with you. And I believe it's only fair to be honest in show business. She was trouble. <laughs> it started in rehearsals, and I think it's only fair that you know what went on. It started, she was going to do it, and she was just trouble. So, 
For those of you that know what I do for a living, you know, no explanation is needed whatsoever. For those of you that don't know what I do for a living, I'm the commemorative mug. Okay. <laughs> well, and uh, by the way, Vera's not a, a Vera Lynn, that's a, a stage name. Her real name's Violet, but she got fed up with called Violin, so she wasn't into that. <laughs> and, um, so I, I, I'm here for now. Now, I think it's only fair. I, I have a reputation for being absolutely honest about what goes on in this business. I think it's only fair. You've had to sit through this, and you've been very good. And I, I should explain uh, what happened. Now, Vera came out at the beginning of the rehearsal period, and she came up to the musical director, uh, Mr. Coleman. I'll call him Mr. Coleman. She said, Coley? <laughs> she said, I'll do Bluebirds Over and We'll Meet Again in G. He said, I've written it in C. She said, I'll do it in G. <laughs> and, you know, the atmosphere, everybody went, oh, Vera's going in. <laughs> here we go, here it comes, the other side of Vera. <laughs> said, calm down, he said, don't you tell me to calm down. He said, I want it in G. <laughs> he said, I've written it in C. She said, do you know who I am? He said, do you know what I do for a living? And he grabbed her by the throat. <laughs> and the whole bit of, oh. What does he do to Vera Lynn? <laughs> and he took her outside, bunged her in the back of his car, drove her down to the White Cliffs of Dover, <laughs> backed her up to the cliff, took her out of the boot, drop kicked her into the English Channel, <laughs> and he said it'll be some sunny day before we'll meet again, Vera. And off. <laughs> it was frightening, but that's my idea. So, I thought. And may I say, uh, Dame Vera, it's an honour to be in your place. Thank you very much. We are very good friends. Now, some of you have been out this evening that are watching at home, and, uh, of course, uh, a lot of the proceedings you will have missed. Everybody's been here in this building watching what's going on. So, for those of you uh, that have been out uh, enjoying the celebrations, I will now recap on what has happened. Well, first of all, His Royal Highness arrived in a car. <coughs> like that, did it? You got out of the car and you met everyone. <laughs> And then he sort of wandered in here and did a poem. Very nice. And... <laughs> but I don't think with an equity card, do you? <laughs> and, um... and then the, um, the dancers came on and they sort of... <laughs> Did all this, then they came over here. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I've got hold of it. Don't worry, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> And you're laughing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> hey! <laughs> I've got a little suggestion for you. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Find the biggest one, chuck them over. <laughs> So a little accident happened. I came over here and uh, the curtain fell. But it's, uh... Don't worry about it. I've, I've sorted it out. <laughs> it's fine. Um, then the next bit that happened... <laughs> we had the ballet. And we had plié, dégagé, grand plié, 
It started with a kiss. A relevé. Then we had plié, dégagé, grand plié, relevé. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. So a little, little bit of the set up here. Um, this bit here. <laughs> you know? This bit. <laughs> Would you mind crossing your legs, please, madam? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to work up here. We're very near the rivers. A lot of ships go past now. Get them. I'll get you for this, Vera. I suppose I'll get the blame for this now. Now I'm in trouble. I really am. You got in trouble! Right here in River City. With a couple of T and that rhymes with P and that stands for Paul. Oh, we surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Gotta figure out a way to keep the young ones moral after school. Our children, children, gonna have trouble. Oh, we got trouble. Yes, we're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 number balls is the devil's tool. Oh, yes, we got trouble, trouble, trouble. Yes, we got trouble here. We got big, big trouble with a T. Gotta run with P. And that stands for pool. Any water to your parents are called with a sister and empty on one fine night. They leave the poor hall, headed for the dance of the Amory. Liberty men, scarlet women, ragtime, shameless music that'll drag your son and your daughter to the arms of a jungle, animalistic, class hysteria, friends. The idle brain is the devil's playground. You got trouble. Charge it, that's my favorite phrase. Ooh, how lucky can you get? When I see the chauffeur, think I'll give him a raise. Ooh, how lucky can you get? We can sit in the country with a bird of coats and a water to shut. Mrs. Ice's pet book, making merry music with the one that I love. How lucky can you be? How lucky can you? Wow! How lucky can you get?
Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. Oh, band will do it, my friends. You hear me? A boys band. I said, River City gonna have a boys band, and I mean she needs it today. With Professor Harold Hill on hand, River City gotta have a boys band. Sure as the Lord made little green apples, the band's gonna be in uniform. Got it. Willie, Teddy, Fred. You'll see the litter of crashing cymbals. And you'll hear the thunder of rolling drums, the shimmer of trumpets. Ratada! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed when Gilmore, Liberat, Pat Conway, W.C. Handy, and John Philip Sousa all came to town on the very same historic day! 76 trombones led the big parade with 110 cornets right behind. There were more than a thousand reeds springing up like trees. There were horns of every shape and kind. There were 50 mounted cannon in the battery, thundering, thundering louder than before. Clarinets of every size and trumpeters who'd improvise a full octopier than the score. When the nation lose their war sense And the world gets back its horse sense What a day for celebration that will be When somebody says the fight's up And it's time to put the lights up Then the first one to be lit up Will be me We're gonna get lit up when the lights go up in London 
We're gonna get lit up As we've never been before You will find me on the tiles You will find me wreathed in smiles I'm gonna get so lit up I'll be visible for my The city will sit up When the lights go up in, in London We'll all be lit up As the strand walks Only more Much more And before The party's played up They're gonna fetch The fire brigade up To the littest Of the scene You ever saw And after that magnificent performance from Michael Barrymore, we've come very nearly to the end of Live for Peace. It was St. Augustine who first said, the purpose of all war is peace. And it was in World War II that President Truman said, our goal must be not peace in our time, but peace for all time. And that is our closing prayer for all people that on earth do dwell.